Here I was in a nice suit, tie, the whole works, in some skanky back alley smoking crack. That was a common thing. Somehow I'd managed to hold down a job for months and have this as my dirty little secret. And uh, you know, as soon as I get paid, I would end up back down there. Uh, yeah, I was the guy with the suit. Uh, everybody down there knew who I was. So, I, uh, and it did become kind of uh, my thing. You know, <laughs> that was my thing. But uh, it didn't last long. Uh, eventually, you know, the job goes and everything goes, and uh, and uh, it's it's just back into that nasty game of crime and drugs. I grew up in uh, St. John, New Brunswick, into. Uh, it's a relatively normal, typical home. And I remember having a lot of fun with my, my young brother and my dad and my mom. My brother and I witnessed a lot of fighting, uh, heard a lot of crying and screaming uh, in the house, and my parents ultimately split up. That's really when things started to change in terms of uh, just the whole family dynamic for us. and. Uh, we stayed away from our home as much as we could. I seen people beaten uh, severely over a $20 debt, you know, and I myself was shot at and beaten with bats and, and mugged and left on the street for dead. And it's just a, a miracle that I came out of it alive. Uh, it's a ruthless, uh, merciless world, you know. My attraction to drinking was that uh, I was, it freed me to release my emotions. Drinking and drugging took me to a different place where I felt invincible. I ended up meeting uh, and getting involved in a relationship with somebody that I worked with outside of my marriage, which led to uh, my wife and I splitting up. I started using crack cocaine every day and doing whatever it took to get myself that drug. Working wasn't something I did anymore. Uh, I just, my, my only uh, goal was to get high, and uh, that meant just going out, trying to find a score to get some money and get high. So I spent many uh, nights in underground parkades, on park benches, under bushes, trees, you, you name it, homeless. Off and on for 15 years, I lived that lifestyle. One night, I'd gotten into a, a fight over some drugs at a crack house and uh, was beaten over the top of my head with a baseball bat. I woke up in a jail cell, uh, dirty, smelly, bleeding, uh, just in terrible shape, and was facing about 12 new charges. Uh, ultimately, uh, I went to jail for a year. Here I was at my very bottom, at my very worst, you know, I'm 43 years old now, uh, in jail, with no real hope for a future. I mean, what am I gonna do? How long am I gonna, how many times am I gonna be able to bounce back? A week after I got out of jail, I went into the Teen Challenge program, and that was the beginning of this amazing transformation for me. And the Lord just touched my heart, and inside, I heard His voice. And it, it just said to me, Dean, look up and take a look around at where you are. This place is beautiful, and I got your back, and this is where you need to be. There was a lot of blessings started to come my way, and then uh, there was a lot of change starting to take place. I did complete the program. I was blessed I got a chance to do an internship here, which I, I, I served in mark, the marketing department, and after I finished my one year internship, I was offered a position here and I've been on staff here now for a couple years. How could I feel fulfilled or how could there have been any peace in my life without God? And it turned out that's what it was. And as soon as I accepted and received Christ in my, into my life and started building that relationship, I've never felt alone. Um, that's Christ in me, you know, so praise God.